In the 1880s, large numbers of North Carolina citizens were moving off the farm to the small towns dotting the state, looking for jobs in the burgeoning tobacco, textile, and furniture industries. At the time, children were educated in locally funded and controlled schoolhouses with one room for all ages and skill levels. But for industry to grow and attract investment, mill owners and state leaders needed a more educated workforce. A new concept emerged. Build schools with unified curricula, where students would progress from grade to grade as they achieved educational benchmarks. The creation of these graded schools was driven in part by a generation of young men coming out of UNC Chapel Hill, among them, educator Charles MacGyver. MacGyver saw that the state's young women were a great untapped resource for staffing graded schools, and in 1892, he worked to establish the Normal and Industrial School now the University of North Carolina, Greensboro. At a time when most women were only expected to marry and run a household, many took hold of the opportunity to have a career. The graded school concept became a movement. In 1902, a group of these women established the Women's Association for the Betterment of Public Schools. They raised funds to build and renovate schoolhouses, buy books and supplies, and lead a variety of health initiatives. At the same time, Governor Charles B. Aycock was pushing to provide funding for construction of new school buildings and to centralize the state's educational system. Aycock funded educational initiatives for all races, but his process revealed the reality of the era. White schools were much better funded and equipped than the African-American graded schools. Despite the challenges, the North Carolina that emerged as a national manufacturing hub in the years leading up to World War II could not have been possible without these early educational investments and reforms.